Hello everyone, my name is Austin Belzer in a, in a different location uh, if you're watching the video podcast. Well, not so much different location, but different part of where I usually record. Um, so, uh, welcome to the Austin B Media Podcast. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. Um, so, if you're not, if you're new here, um, the Austin B Media Podcast is a short form podcast discussing movies video games, technology, TV, music, and much more, depending on what I uh, experienced that week, so to speak. Um, but before we get into the show, I want to do, I want to start with everything I uh, start out with, um, and I want to thank my patrons. Uh, that's uh, Thomas Stoneham Judge from uh, MoviesReal.net, uh, and you can find him on Twitter and, and Instagram at BeingTSJ. Uh, Shane Kanto, uh, also known as the Waste Center Viewer from his YouTube channel. Uh, Sif Pop, among many others. Uh, I know he's got a few other projects going on. Um, I would also like to thank Joseph Davis. You can also find his work on Sif Pop. David Walters, Ampula Pula, Matthew Simpson of Awesome Friday. In fact, I just recorded a clip for his podcast in which I talk about uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, so uh, take, take a look at that. Uh, I'll include a description, uh, link in the description. Um, let's see. Uh, Tom Blackburn, Destiny, Shamar Hunter, Alaya, uh, uh, Libby S- Stevenson, and Pat, Pat, Patsy Sanchez. Uh, thank you so, so much for um, t- taking the time to support my work. It, it means the world to me uh, that you give me money. Um, I still find it quite ridiculous that... Um, people pay me money for the things I do um, and so yeah just thank you so much um, and if you'd like to become a patron uh, head on over to patreon.com slash Austin B Media or Austin B Media slash support which I have a few new ways to support me over there so head on over to either link for more information on that um, so let's get into uh, the heart of the show so, I did not watch any movies this week. I know, shocker. Um, there was I didn't get to see Nope this weekend. So, uh, um, just uh, I got to watch two comedy specials, uh, namely Nikki Glaser, uh, Glazer's Good Clean Filth and Gerard Carmichael's Rothaniel, both uh, streaming on Di- uh, not Disney Plus, HBO Max. Um, they're great uh, comedy specials. And um, they, they're so much, they're so different from each other. Uh, Nick Glazer's um, Good Clean Filth uh, comedy special is much more, um, as, a, um, as a special um, kind of suggests, um, she's talking about how comics are, female comics specifically, are so quote unquote filthy on stage uh, and I think it's kind of a nice meta commentary uh, about female comics in general um, and in the same vein Rathaniel um, Gerard Carmichael's Ker- uh, special is a much more laid back uh, special it, I wouldn't even call it a comedy special uh, for most of it uh, because it's just him pulling the audience revealing secrets um, and there, there's the two specials are so different from one another. It's um, amazing. Uh, so, so yeah. Um, so it, I, I liked. Um, um, if I had to pick one that I would say, oh, watch this. I'd say Rathaniel. Um, Nicky Glazer's um, Good Clean Filth um, is is an all right comedy special. Uh, but I think it doesn't lean hard enough into um, the critique of female comics and what uh, Nikki Glaser thinks about it. Um, whereas Rathaniel kind of directly um, says, hey, this is what I'm dealing with. Let me just talk about it for an hour. Um, and, you know, I was thinking about Rathaniel, the special. Um, for a good few hours after watching it, whereas the Nikki Glaser 
um, special kind of just went um, out of my mind as soon as I watched it. It's nothing against her, uh, against Nikki. Um, I love her stand-up. Uh, but the problem was one leaned hard into the format, whereas one was just very conventional. So it, it, it was just a thing where it's like, uh, you know, it, it, it wasn't my cup of tea. Um, it, it just didn't lean hard enough into the format. So, so uh, both of those are streaming on HBO Max. I'll have um, links to the HBO Max pages in the uh, description of the show notes, um, depending on where you're watching this or listening. Um, and then um, the old standby for All Mankind Season 3, Episode 7. Uh, let's see. Um, so this is, I, I'm going to try and dance around spoilers for the show um, but I don't think I like where the season overall is going um, it, it, it seems to be too focused on Danny rather than Ed or even uh, or the big um, questions leading into the season um, so it it, it it tends to for this episode to lean so so far away from last episodes where it was very much a critique of the system at the time um, it, it just wasn't for me that's really all it was um, I come to For All Mankind for lessons about space travel and the what ifs of space travel if we had uh, if the Russians beat us to the moon uh, by a year or however long. I forget how long. It's been two, three seasons, so it's kind of hard to keep up with all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I, um, it, it just wasn't for me. Uh, I like the direction by Andrew Stanton, uh, but uh, it, it's just too obsessed with Danny um, to really get into... Um, things I liked about it um, and I know you're expecting me to talk about High School Musical uh, episode season 3 episode 1 um, but I can't talk about it because today is the 25th and it's going out on the 25th so I can't talk about it till the 27th but uh, check out my reviews of the, uh, my review of the first two episodes uh, the commentary should be up in a couple days um, and I'll have a spoiler discussion up, so keep it out for that. On the all, all of that's going to be out on the twenty seventh, um, earlier for, for patrons. So that's all TV. Um, I actually caught up with a few games. Um, that's actually where I spent most of my week. Um, so I've played the three following games. I played Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One and Two, the remake. Uh, Tony Hawk, Tony. Cl- Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Future Soldier and Power Wash Simulator. So I'm just going to go in the order uh, that I have it here, uh, Pro Skater 1 and 2. So I I was waiting for this to come down in price a, a little bit um, because the, the amount of charge uh, they were charging for the uh, Series S slash X uh, version of the game was uh, abhorrent, but it finally came down in price to where I was like, oh, okay, I, this, I can actually justify um, picking up this game now. Um, and it's exactly the game you remember from PlayStation 1. Um, I, I loaded up Warehouse in Free Skate, and I was just like, I was in tears because it's like, oh, this is how I remember it. It's been so long since I felt this feeling of joy picking up a video game. Not that I, not that I haven't had video games that I've loved. Um, Walking Dead Season 1, uh, the Telltale game, um, that was a really great um, uh, series. Um, even season, 
excuse me, season two was good too, um, but just kind of got away from what I liked about about it. Um, but I haven't dipped into anything other than the free skate stuff because I suck at pro skater. But anyways, the reason I, I, I did this was because uh, the reason I play I only did the free skate is just like I I don't know it, it just something came over me it was just like this is how I remember it this is a wave of nostalgia that I haven't felt um, in quite a long time if I'm gonna be quite real um, and because you I remember having the PlayStation demo disc for Pro Skater 1 and it was like oh this is something new and it's been so long since anything Pro Skater came out um, we don't talk about that one we don't talk about Pro Skater 5 um, but um, it, it, it had been so long since I had an experience like that that I it was just pure release really um, that, that that's the best thing I can describe it as is just a, a release valve um, something I also picked up was Ghost Recon Future Soldier um, this is a frustrating game um, this is a frustrating game uh, for sure um, because I, I, I already knew some things going into it that I wouldn't like um, but I was interested to check out um, gunsmith, uh, which is where you can craft your weapon to the way you like it. Uh, you can change the optics, you can change every single part of the weapon, which is something I remember Ubisoft, or Ubisoft, um, talking a lot about when they unveiled it at E3. Um, I, I can't remember if it's 2011 or 2012. Um, and I was just like, oh, that sounds so cool. Um, and it's such a, it's such an unrealized potential, uh, this game is. I feel like it took um, the core mechanics from Splinter Cell Blacklist, um, or even maybe even um, Conviction, maybe some things like that, because you can mark four targets, um, like you could in that game, and there's like some. They do the same thing of text in the um, in world in game in world, so to speak, uh, and it feels very much like conviction in that way. But um, unlike Blacklist, where you could kind of do things your own way, and it was very the the gameplay was very adaptive. Um, this feels restrictive. Um, I remember playing Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter 1 and 2 back in the day, uh, 2006, 2008, something like that, and I don't, I, I, the one thing I remember about that, those games was it was restri restrictive for a reason. It was restrictive for, hey, you can't just go in here guns blazing and expect to live. It, that, that, that's not how actual war works. So it was a reflection of that war. Um, but here, it, it, it can't pick, future so soldier can't pick a lane. There are times where I've been very careful with my shots and then it'll say, oh, you've been detected. Or, um, or it'll be like, hey, you gotta go out, guns a blazing, so you gotta uh, pick up an SMG on your way to this rally point. Or, and just little things like that really bug me um, because it's just like, okay, you're not allowing me the free, uh, the freedom that Advanced Warfighter did where it, even though you had to plan things out, it was up to you to figure out how to figure uh, to plan it. You know, you, there's some adaptability to it. Um, you could make it, there was not, no linear path. Here it's very linear. Um, there, there's a scene, there's a mission I'm in right now that's really, really frustrating, because I'm in an airfield, and I'm trying to pick my targets very, very carefully, um, and 
every time I l I'll even use a drone to make sure I've got all the people marked. But the thing is, unlike Blacklist, where I not, sorry, not Blacklist, Conviction, but I think it's carried over in Blacklist as well. Um, where where in those games, um, you could mark uh, uh, an unlimited amount of targets, but only shoot four. Here it's like okay, you can be uh, you can only mark four targets ever, and that's it. It kind of gets hard to track things. Uh, because you're, you're like, you almost have to remain um, um, hidden, and I get that's the point of the game. Game is to remain hidden, um, but there are just points where it's like, I want to do it this way, and the game is not letting me to do it this way. Um, it's it's just supremely, supremely frustrating. And compare that to Pro Skater One and Two. Um, where I can just do whatever I want, I, and it says, okay, hey, we know you're having a hard time, uh, but we're going to teach you the tutorials. We're going to take you through it, because it's been about 20 years since you probably played Pro Skater 1 and 2. Um, but, like, that made sense, because it's like, oh, it, there, there's an adaptability to Pro Skater that future soldier just doesn't have it, I mean I I mean even in the gunsmith thing where they're like okay toy around with everything that you really can't toy around with everything because you've got to unlock everything by doing multiplayer stuff and I don't the multiplayer server has been down for probably years uh, you feel free to correct me in the comments um, on the YouTube or um, Spotify um, or Twitter or wherever um, but yeah, it, it just feels so restrictive that it's um, suffocating. Um, it, it, it's, it's just suffocating. I, I think that, that would be the, the way to do it, um, the, the way I'd describe it, because it's like, just let me do, the th do it the way I want to do it, and then punish me later because I didn't do it this way. Um, or like, let me feel the consequences of messing up, um, rather than just immediately saying, "Hey, you've been detected." Um, it 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 just feels like the Call of Dutyification of Ghost Recon, and I'm not here for it. Now, I I did play Wildlands a, a bit, and I know, um, oh, what was the one after that? Breakpoint. Uh, I didn't play that because of what I uh, saw in uh, the little bit I played of Wildlands, but I was hoping Future Soldier would be, oh hey, this is a good throwback game. Uh, especially since it's on backwards compatibility um, on the, the Xbox Series consoles. I just thought maybe, I don't know. I, and I guess the other thing, uh, going back to a, a comment I made, uh, so you need to remain hidden, right? So I always, I always um, make sure I, I'm in active camo, uh, w which you just crouch and active camo turns on. But here's the thing. People can still see you when you're in active camo because the game wants, you, wants them to see you. But in other cases, I've walked right in the middle of a crowd, no reaction. So it's just, it's a whole thing. Um, oh, Power Wash Simulator. Um, that, that is a relaxing game. Um, and something I'll probably download uh, here in the coming uh, days uh, after I finish Future Soldier, maybe. Um, because I think there's, I think I've tapped in, I, simulator games like this tap into a need to just unwind. Um, it's just that sense of achievement you get when it's like when you see that little video playback of you washing the van or washing a barbecue and watching that meter go up to a hundred percent and it's just fascinating I've, I've probably played two or three hours of it in one go because it's just that enthralling um, so yeah I, I, I'd, I'd recommend it uh, 
Don't play the cloud gaming version of it, though, um, because the problem with the cloud gaming version is, you know, it, it, it relies on quick inputs. So, um, the problem with that is um, the, the cloud gaming version tends to stutter, even on the best connection. I mean, I'm not, I don't have great internet connection, but my internet was reading... Uh, my internet hotspot for my phone was reading about 60 megabytes per second at the time. And I feel like that should be a stable enough connection, but apparently not, uh, because I'd just get occasional uh, things where I'd get like a half second delay or something like that on the when I did something, and it just threw me off um, time and time again. Uh, let's see. So with that, let's talk about what I recently published. Um, let's see, at the time of recording, he, I just uploaded a Behind the Curtain Episode 2 for patrons. Um, I, also on Patreon, I have the first uh, clip from my se Season 3 commentary of High School Musical, the musical, the series, which is um, uh, an original song from Joshua, Joshua Bassett. Um, but don't worry, you, have to, you don't have to pay for that. Um, I have Austin B. Reacts to the Don't Worry Darling trailer number two, National Treasure Edge of History, Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves, Halloween Ends. Um, I also published a video and written review of the first two episodes of season three of High School Musical and Musical the series. Uh, and that's pretty much um, to steal a tagline from a, a a YouTube channel I, I, I follow. That's pretty much it for this week. Uh, um, I hope you enjoy my this podcast. Uh, if you do, I'd really like for you to um, rate it on iTunes if you do it there. Uh, I know you can also rate it on Spotify. Um, and, and then um, if you want to get this early, um, you could go to uh, patreon.com slash awesomebemedia to get it a day early. So that's always fun. Uh, both the video and audio podcast will be available a day uh, a day before. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. There's other things. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to subscribe because you'll get a notification as soon as I uh, publish any new videos. I'm doing YouTube Shorts. Uh, you can follow me on uh, on uh, Instagram at at Austin B Media and on Twitter at Austin B Media underscore at the end there. Um, and then on TikTok at Austin B Media. I'm just doing a whole lot of stuff. Uh, I also, if you're listening to this at, on the 27th, I should have my commentary for the first episode of High School Musical and Musical uh, Season 3, Episode 1, as well as a spoiler discussion of that episode up that, as well. Uh, for non patrons, it's a dollar per episode. Uh, for for the show, um, and then for patrons, you just get that free of charge. So, with that said, until next time.